The AMD Athlon 5350 is a pretty budget quad core APU. Stick around to find out more. <laughs> So to jump right in, AMD very kindly sent us over this HTPC kit, which included an AMD Athlon 5350 APU, the stock heatsink for that, an ASUS AM1i-A board, which is an ITX motherboard, and 4 gigs of AMD Radeon Performance Series RAM. Starting on the side of the box, you can find the chip enclosed in a clear plastic case visible from the outside, just like most AMD chips. On the front of the box, you will find the AMD Athlon logo and the fact that this is a multi-core APU. It's actually a quad-core with AMD Radeon R3 graphics. The motherboard, as I said, is an ITX AM1 board from ASUS, which is really nice as the kit is centered around being a media center, meaning that this board can fit in the smallest of cases and fit nicely into your TV cabinet. It's still plenty feature rich for its size with a full UEFI BIOS, quality capacitors and plenty more features to read about on the back of the box. Inside it, inside that box you'll find the motherboard itself which has two DIMM slots and two SATA ports as well as centred with an AM1 socket. You'll also get a rear IO shield which I found nearly impossible to get on with the uh, effectively sticking pronged things are sticking out for some reason. Uh, you'll also find two SATA cables, a driver disc, a user's manual and a few other leaflets that you'll likely bin as soon as you see them. Inside the processor's box you'll find the chip itself, a heatsink which is slightly off camera and you'll see in a second but is very small and requires some installation which re might require some amount of force. You'll also get an information leaflet with an AMD sticker on it. As I mentioned we also got some AMD performance series memory as well which is a 4 gig DIMM clocked at about 1600MHz which as you may know is really good for APUs as the higher the clock speed of the memory the higher or generally speaking the faster it runs. The motherboard, as I said, is centred by an AM1 socket, which as far as I'm aware has no backwards compatibility with any other product line, meaning you specifically need an AMD AM1 processor with this board. It also has two SATA 3 or SATA 6 gb per second ports, meaning that you'll likely need an external NAS solution if you're to use this for storing your media as well as playing it, unless you went all out with 6TB drives and RAID 0 that is. It has an open-ended PCI X4 lane, meaning you could run a discrete graphics card if you wanted to, um, but it just wouldn't be as powerful as you might hope. Finally, it has two DDR3 DIMM slots, um, meaning you can have up to 16GB of RAM. The rear I.O. is rather interesting as it has both the mouse and keyboard PS2 ports, and carrying on from that you find the single VGA, single DVI-D, a serial port? Um, which is strange and I don't really know why that's there either. Um, an HDMI port, 4 USB 2 ports, 2 USB 3s and a gamer ethernet port as well as the standard 2.1 audio jacks. Now the chip itself is a fairly standard size, in fact I found it to be quite small. I compared it to a uh, 2011-3 socket, that was actually an i7-5960X. Um, so yeah, uh, there's a bit of a size difference there, but anyway, to install the chip, as I thought I'd do a little bit of a build guide, as you can see on the corner of the processor there is a gold triangle. All you have to do on the socket is lift the arm up, line the gold triangle up, um, with AMD it's normally the text lines up with the bulge at the top where the arm sits, and then just push the arm down and make sure it's locked in place. As you can see, um, you, it's now secure as me throwing the board up and down, like an idiot. Um, to install the heatsink, I actually needed to push both of those pins uh, into the side of the sockets and then push the pins through the, uh, push the other pins through those and then as you can see the pin that goes into the thicker pin I guess um, sits uh, in the board and pushes the clip outwards which means it sits nice and tight in there and obviously ke keeps the CPU cool which we'll be taking a look at later in the video. Now as I said, uh, we do have some RAM and if you haven't ever installed RAM before, this is probably the best time to start as DDR3 is very easy to install, all you have to do is uncheck or uh, push the little pin at the side, match the notch and then literally just slide it in until the one pin at the side clicks in. Make sure that it's nice and level and I'd probably leave it on a flat surface. Recom I recommend doing this uh, before you actually you know, plug in the PC and everything and build it in the case as this way you can test the components afterwards. Once that little clip on the side is in the right angle, that basically means you're finished building the PC, minus a hard drive and a power supply, as you've already got graphics, processor and memory, as well as the motherboard and cooling, all set up. 
To show off some of the uses of such a system, I put the PC on my spare desk and used it as an office slash productivity PC, while also enjoying some great YouTube content. Obviously, offices are generally opting to use either small form factor PCs like the Zotac Pico or pre-built solutions like a Dell PC, but for a small startup this could be great a great little system to run your digital signage, do your office work and browse the web. For more HTPC use cases, I hooked it up to my 47 inch 1080p TV and kicked back and relaxed to some Star Wars using XBMC. I also used my wireless Xbox 360 controller, which kind of goes to show that you have a lot more flexibility than uh, if you had a console, uh, hint hint. Anyway, um, if you're anything like me, you couldn't go too long without your powerhouse gaming PC. So with Steam in-home streaming, you're able to stream literally any game in your Steam library, including Origin games if you just literally add them to your library as a non-Steam game, to your TV. Um, and you can also use a game controller or a keyboard and mouse to play your games, it's literally your choice. So my examples here include Grid 2, which if you remember from the Pico video didn't work very well. Well, now with a quad core that's got a bit more power and a gigabit ethernet port, it runs a lot better. Running at 1080p in full settings, it provides an awesome and still fairly low ping gaming experience. I also ran Bioshock Infinite and found that it was beautifully smooth and very playable, even when shooting folks, which is really awesome. Finally, if you do have a NAS that can run applications such as the Asus Tor or QNAP ones we've reviewed already, you can use services like Plex Media Server to stream your movies to your HTPC. Or you can use Netflix since it's a PC and the choices are literally endless. Now since this technically still is a CPU review, I can't finish without benchmarking this little thing. So to start that testing, I ran Prime95 for a few hours and was seriously surprised with the results. My room, which is normally about 30 degrees, was often warmer or the same temperature as the CPU, meaning that this power efficient little thing which has a TDP of 25 watts can keep itself perfectly cool under 100% load of small FFTs, um, you know, with four cores all running at 100% and not maxing over 40 degrees. That is fantastic, and for anyone who wants to use any, you know, maybe even run this as a web server or something, keeping this even in somewhere like a cupboard or something, it will still not get too hot, even running plenty of MySQL queries and stuff like that, so this is definitely a plus point for this little chip. Testing. As expected, this thing isn't the i7-5960X we had, but it does do well for such a low price point, and that is what AMD was going for here, with a chip that cost less than £40. The entire system wouldn't cost more than £200, obviously at time of filming, complete to buy, with the motherboard, APU and RAM costing around about £100 of that, which means that you have an extra £100 left for the case, power supply and hard drive. In Cinebench it did well again for the price with around 160 Cinebench points. In OpenGL it was good as it beat out Intel's HD 4000 graphics and came close to a GT NVIDIA GT 620 which is a discrete GPU that cost more than the chip alone. On to the awards. For value for money this has to be a 5. It has great performance for its value for money which is why it's getting a 3 performance. Um, it is great, um, there isn't too many drawbacks with the actual price point but obviously in comparison to other products it's just not perfect. For functionality overall because we're grading the board as well I'm going to have to give that a 3 as well because while the Intel, the, sorry the uh, integrated graphics um, do fantastically it's just not uh, the motherboard itself just isn't great for the, this kit and I would definitely recommend a different ICX board, maybe one that actually has an internal USB 3 header, as the fractal case we used didn't actually have any USB 2 ports which meant I had no front panel ports for this. For style, it's probably going to be like a 3 again just because the board itself doesn't look very good and the CPU is a CPU so it kind of doesn't really make too much sense. Um, if you're going for box art then the AMD box definitely has to get a 5 because it looks awesome and it's great for the size which means you know if it's getting posted you could probably fit it through your letterbox which is awesome and for Tech Team GB score it's going to be a 4. I really like this little processor and if you're in the market for an HTPC this is definitely something that you would want to check out. Other than that the award it's going to get is definitely the budget buster. It's fantastic this thing is amazing for the price and if you have you know 200 quid to drop on a media center then this thing just 
just get it, just buy it now, build it. It only takes you five minutes to build it. Obviously, as I said, the performance for the heat sink is fantastic and the heat output in general. And even with two fans running at high RPMs in this system, it didn't really cause much of an issue in terms of noise. I've left it on um, for days on end. I've actually slept within like four feet of the uh, the actual case itself and I, I didn't notice it. So this really is just a fantastic little system. So other than that, please hit the like button if you like the video or you like the product. Um, hit the dislike button if you didn't like the video or the product um, and let us know what you did or didn't like about the video or the products in the comments down below. Other than that, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one. So thanks for watching this Tech Team GB video, you've probably seen enough of me already so I'm going to go away right after I say if you haven't already liked or disliked just let us know why in the comments down below as well. Um, check out some of our other videos, hopefully there'll be some somewhere around me and then also um, feel free to subscribe as well, that really helps us out um, and yeah obviously shows companies that you love us. So if you do love us check us out on Facebook or Twitter, hopefully there will also be some stuff around here maybe. Um, but otherwise that's pretty much it from me so we'll see you all in the next video.